to write about. Um, and the guy who created this mailing list was uh, Kyle Orland. Uh, so he is also a big factor in the whole thing that then uh, kicked off, which was the whole gamers are dead thing, where like pretty much any big gaming outlet in the US wrote a story how gamers are not a thing and how all these diverse people play games, which is true. Um, but basically saying gamer culture is over and gamer culture is dead. Now, if this GameStop thing teaches you one thing, which is something he should have, he's a gaming journalist, right? That would have been my take. My take on this whole thing would have been, look, this is this is gaming culture, right? For better or for worse, you might not like it, but it is a thing. It exists. It is not dead. Um, when gamers get pissed off, uh, they get they get really pissed off. Also, like that, that's one of the things. Like with the Discord ban, right? So any big Discord server will have these problems, right? So so what happens if somebody says something like like that, like in weird Icelandic characters in a EA? In an official EA, you know, Electronic Arts run Discord server, right? That that'll get flagged. Will the EA server will get closed because people keep violating like the trust and safety, health, healthcare, and tulips uh, thing from Discord? No, of course not. They'll probably not not even get warnings. Like this is a, a fucking hypocrisy. That that's what. Um, what always uh, annoys me with this kind of thing. And yes, uh, if I see this correctly, I'm still streaming, but for some reason, um, wait, let's add a marker here so I know how to edit this out. For some reason, my st stream have to seems to have died. Uh, just as I was ranting about Twitch. What a surprise. What a surprise. Okay, seems seems to be seems to be working now. Uh if anybody's uh, in chat, can you please let me know if you can see this? That would be helpful. It died and came back. Did it die just at the moment where I was ranting about uh about uh Twitch? Yes. <laughs> of course, of course it did. Of course it did. You know, I can stream like The Witcher all day long with boobs and everything. Uh, but as soon as I, I say that uh, Twitch is moderating things, the stream dies. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. So everybody, I'm sorry for that. Uh, please. Uh, well, I'm I'm not really because there's nothing I can do. Maybe, or maybe it's just Twitch is being weird again. I am so. While I am at a... Um, at a break here anyway uh, with this. Uh, I might as well stop here uh, and then, you know, uh, fix, the, fix this in post and save the thing here and thank um, Jaffer, Jaffer uh, for following. That was an hour ago, but it was while I was doing the show, so I couldn't, couldn't thank him or her or them. Um, so thanks for that. I appreciate it very much. I will now uh, have a quick break and just get myself another beer. Ooh. Spilling the beer I have. I'll be back right away. So don't go anywhere. And then we'll uh, record the rest of the show. I was just thinking um, if this is... Um, if I take a break here anyway, I might as well... Uh, you know, might as, might as well get myself a new new beer so I'll, I'll be back very soon see you in a second
Right, I told you I would be back right away. Uh, now I have no fucking idea what I said. Oh, first of all, oh, yeah. I need to drink the, the pain away of the stream dropping. I hate it when that happens. It's also not, I like, I mean, I used to have internet problems at some point, but like, that's not it at all. This is like completely Twitch every time. Like I just checked on my, on my router and it's been connected the whole time. It's been uploading the whole time. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff has a Twitchy finger. It's not Jeff anymore, by the way. Uh, Bezos uh, just quit. Uh, he's, he's just chairman emeritus. And he, like the new guy is like the, uh, AWS uh, uh, CEO. Of course, AWS censored parlor, so it, it'll probably get worse. <clears throat> uh, where was I? What did what did I say here last? Let's see. Um, with this kind of thing, of course not. They'll probably not not even get warnings. Like this is a, a fucking. Hypocrisy, that, that's what um, what always uh, annoys me with this kind of thing. Right, so I think I'll just, just wrap up this segment here and then we're into, into the feedback. Yeah, hip hypocrisy is always uh, what annoys me most. The only thing that helps is, is a beer. So that's basically uh, what's happened. And of course, the reaction is going to be, uh, you know, some censorship. There's going to be some, uh, you know, they can't have those pesky Reddit people talking to each other. Um, there's going to be some legislation, I'm guessing. Um, scrutiny for these apps, which I don't really care about. Um, you know, I don't have any skin in this game, so I don't, don't really care. But I, I do think it's funny this whole thing happened even though you know even if it's not a story of um you know of the little man show you know giving the finger to like the wall street suit guys it is still interesting for somebody who um who's interested in technology and and these kind of things because it's um if you look at it in hindsight uh, I mean, it's you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's always easy to do that in hindsight, but I mean, I, I think some people have seen this coming and have written about this like years ago. But it was obviously uh, something that was going to happen. Um, you know, you you get these apps, you get all these people investing, and especially you know, you lock them in their house. They're like fucking bored. What else were they gonna do? And I feel like it's, it's only get gonna get worse. Like I was thinking when like all these. Uh, uh, these politicians, like these, these uh, you know, progressive politicians, were were bitching about this. It's like, like what, what, what? Like a lot of this is probably also because you know, like the stimulus money people got, like under the Trump administration. What will happen <coughs> if you put people on universal basic income? Right, uh, they they'll start putting some of that money into things like this and gamble. Uh, they will they will do that. I'm pretty sure. Because uh, while these politicians are all very intelligent and progressive, and you know, uh, you know, don't don't like capitalism pretty much. Uh, I don't know. At least that's what they say. Um, the people they're giving their money to will not necessarily be that way, right? They they will be as people are, uh, un, um you know, they they'll be they'll be uh, they'll do dumb things. Um, They'll be unresponsible, uh, sorry, irresponsible. Um, you know, they, they, they'll do stuff like that, uh, and <laughs> and then then you're like, oh, what happened? <laughs> we gave we locked people in their houses, gave them all this free money, and what did they do? They went on and uh, they they bought stock, and then they talked about it on Reddit. Like in hindsight, it's just it's just hilarious. I mean, it's just hilarious anyway. Um, but yeah, and it's I think. To, to, to wrap this up, um, it's not only a funny story and an interesting story, it's also, um, I found it interesting because it shows a certain um, mechanic. And I found this interesting because, you know, when I talked about the, uh, the, 
the, the, the plate guys and, and that kind of thing, like this the fintech. Um, this this goes in the same direction. You you have a situation now where where these kind of these these apps and these these infrastructures that people are building um, come into play and they change they change the land, landscape and it will not only be um something like this right this is um it, it won't only be financial markets um as soon as you give people the apps and and abilities to do something like this and uh, you know to um to do things from their home that usually people in suits do in in offices it it will change will change dynamics and of course there will be like the equivalent of shit posting right i mean this is one of the reasons um i don't care like i'm not against these apps uh, but that's also because i don't really care about the stock market i don't and i don't really know if this is a good development or a bad development or if it's just indifferent um but like if if I mean, this is the reason why, for example, I'm against internet voting, um, because I feel uh, voting needs to be a more analog, slow, thought-out process. Aside from, you know, what I talked about, I think in episodes in the second episode about you know all these technologies being horribly insecure. Um, aside from that, it's like it will lead to something like this, right? It it, it will lead to literally a subreddit where people will discuss how they can game uh you know the elections in their local state or whatever uh i, I i'm pretty sure about that you know that that is if you if you game like if you the trend has been put these things into the digital realm gamify them and make them easily like make them easily accessible to everybody and then gamify them and that i'm i'm pretty sure this will be a trend that will go you know that will that will follow that we will follow that trajectory with i don't know if it's going to be actual voting in some countries it's probably going to be um like um uh you know referenda you know stuff like brexit this is stuff like brexit um you know, I might piss off some people saying this, but like, you know, this is like a, it's a mass dynamic. Sometimes you kick kick these these dynamics loose among a large population of people that will then do something and decide something that, as individuals, if they actually thought about the situation, they would do. <coughs> I'm not saying, um, well, dry throat. Sorry. Mm. I'm not saying Wall Street bets and this whole GameStop thing is that way. Um, I actually think this is just hilarious because I think it doesn't hurt anybody. Like there's now all these stories. Oh my God, all these people who can't really afford it will not lose will all lose all that money. But yeah, okay. But I don't have any sympathy for them, right? If you go play on the stock market, you better do it with money that you can afford, right? And I'm, I certainly don't mind these hedge fund people. The the only. Uh, issue here in my view is the same as walrus guy said is actually that the wall street people are not the ones who are hurting because they always get bailed out they always get money from somewhere the the, the rich people are never the people going bankrupt right it's like trump it's like he's always creatively uh, borrowing money from a bank that borrows money from another bank while he has well that credit is like defaulting he just borrows money there um it's always you know the little people Get in fact, but then on the other hand, you were buying this shit on an app, right? You, just, I mean, and that's another problem with these apps, right? They they abstract what you're actually doing, and it might seem to to be like a game to you, when it, maybe it isn't. Uh, maybe it's actually a lot of money, and maybe it's just maybe you should think about what you're doing. But you know, I just see, I, I just find this interesting, mostly because a, it's a funny story, and b, it's a, I think it's a beacon for things to come. Uh, in other areas and uh, that's my take on the whole situation i hope you liked it please let me know uh, there's a contact link private citizen press it's a contact link uh, at the top of the page uh, at the very top i'm just scrolling there the show notes are very long 
uh, that gets you to to a page that lists all the ways uh, you can contact me, including, uh, of course, a PGP key email. You can write me a letter. Uh, you can there's a Discord server, there's IRC, there is uh, all this stuff. There is a secure contact form for whistleblowers. If the PGP doesn't work for some reason, had that happened this week, you can use that. Uh, so many ways, and of course, there's the feed in the feedback segment. There's also a link, and we we're, we're going to get into that. But I just wanted to say, if you disagree, if you agree, if you have a different point, please let me know. If you uh, don't like that I'm talking about financials on this podcast, which you know started life pretty much as a privacy podcast uh, and branched a lot more into politics, um, but I think you know, I think this this is interesting. I think this applies to our interests. Uh, if you agree, if you don't agree, please tell me because I am trying to tailor the show for you, right? Not completely, right? I like to talk about things that I actually find interesting. I never do a show which I don't find interesting because uh, to be honest, people are pitching in but you're not paying me enough for that. <laughs> so I have to have fun while I do this. Uh, but uh, I'm open to your suggestion always and I welcome them always. And with that, let's get into the actual feedback. So first of all, we had, or I had, uh, I think that was in Discord, uh, a comment from Funky Duck, who is also uh, watching right now on Twitch, um, about last week's episode. Um, and he suggested I do an episode on net neutrality because we were, we were talking, or I was talking about net neutrality. Now, I've talked a lot about net neutrality in the past on other podcasts, but I see, you know, I've got a lot of new, new listeners that haven't listened to stuff I've done in the past, so I feel like it might be worth revisiting at some point. I probably have to do some research because, uh, I mean, I did actually work for an ISP, but this is, uh, this was in. Uh, well, I stopped working for them uh, when I went to, yeah, when I worked, when I, it's the 2012, I stopped working for them when I went to London uh, to work for The Age. So it's been a while ago. So things might have changed. I don't think that the general, my general gist hasn't changed, but I think pretty much, you know, like when I did that episode about um, SSL and privacy, it, I think a lot of people are uh, they're not necessarily wrong I think they I think they read stuff that's wrong and they're misunderstanding the actual issue because I think there was a lot of uh, misguided uh, characterizations uh, in the press you know pushed by people like the EFF uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation which I you know really like but like you know like every organization, they sometimes people are wrong, and, and they were really wrong on this one. Um, but you know, maybe I, we can talk about that at some point. Anyway, I thought that was a great discussion and a good um, reference for, you know, what I mean with you know, just tell me on Discord and email, just tell me what you want, and I'll, I'll try to accommodate it. Anyway, we have an anonymous producer uh, who also writes in about last week's episode who works in the automotive industry, uh, and they say. First of all, thank you for the information about the way about the way car manufacturers are avoiding the regulation by not registering quote new vehicle types. The applicable term here is probably facelift. Initially, it was a surprise to me why so many new projects are facelifts. This could be the reason behind that. As a second point, while discussing the topic, you mentioned that cars... Well, let's first get into that. Okay, so the facelift thing. No, actually, what I was talking about was actually more than a facelift. Um... So I was talking about, you know, when the new Golf comes out, there is always, like, uh, VW, the the new Golf, let's, uh, is it the Golf 7 now? I don't know. Let's, let's take the Golf 6, right? Um, that model had several facelifts. My car, uh, the, the car I own, which is a Volkswagen Transporter, uh, colloquial called the T4, so the for fourth generation uh, VW Transporter, uh, has... I think it had three facelifts. I think I, I my mine was built in two thousand and two, so it's the newest facelift one. But like that's a car model, 
right? And those have different facelifts. Facelifts are generally, as the name suggests, just changes to the look. Um, so they change the chass chassis of the car. Uh, what I was actually talking about are new models, right? So when the um, when the Golf goes from Golf 5 to Golf 6, they might not register that as a new car model. They, they'll use the type... Uh, like uh, the type approval that they have because that whole process is very hard to go through and they, they go like, well, you know, we changed this and that and of course it looks different and there's different seats in it but, you know, like the drivetrain is still 85% from the old model, whatever, you know. That's that's what I meant. Anyway, our uh, anonymous uh, listener goes on to say uh, and producer actually, but uh, anonymous producer, goes on to say because they are producer because uh, they wrote in um, as a second point while discussing the topic you mentioned that cars now have things like computers in them the technical term here is ECU now again uh, I have to disagree um, yes the ECU is a computer but you know you know how I was saying um, in the show that they're you know computers and computers technically a lot of thing things are a computer right um uh, Technically, uh, you know, I, I just don't have an, don't have an example right now. But you 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 might have a uh, a smart uh, temperature control like for your heating element, right? That that is technically a computer, but in reality, it's just like a very 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 dumb system on a chip. Maybe not even that. And and then there's things like an iPhone or like a tablet or like a PC. To me, that those are computers. And I was I was trying to differentiate these computers in air quotes, like really smart computers. They're embedded systems, but you know, let's say they run Linux or something like that, right? Um, well, that's other parts run Linux as well, but I was trying to differentiate themselves from like the thing that controls the brakes or the ECU. For example, in my, um, I know this because my motorbike's in the repair shop. I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. And it had an electronics problem, which I will I traced to the ECU. So I have a very simple um, motorbike. It's a Moto Guzzi V7, um, built in 2013, and uh, the engine's pretty much the same engine uh, they they had in the 70s bike that it's modeled after. Now, of course, because of EU regulations um, and you know uh, uh, emissions uh, standards, it doesn't have a carburetor anymore. It has an injection system. Now, because of that, that, that's basically the only thing they changed in the engine. The starter motor looks exactly like it was in the 70s. Everything, the um, the uh, generator that, you know, powers the electronics, whatever. It is all, it's all pretty much the same. The drive shaft, um, it looks, it, it, I mean, it, it's made out of newer components. It's, you know, like the, the engine is, um, you know, it's this, this pulverized uh, cover. Um, so it's 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 all modern, but it's basically built like an engine in the 70s. The only difference is it has an injection system. And because of that, of course, it has an ECU, right? Because uh, if you don't have a carburetor, uh, you have, you need, like, it, there needs to be a computer in air quotes in there that calculates, um, you know, what the air temperature is, what the air pressure is, uh, and then calculates, you know, when you're starting the engine, how much fuel you have to mix with how much air, uh, and then, you know, when the spark plugs fire and all of that. Now, I would hesitate to call the thing that is in my Moto Guzzi a computer. It, it technically is. Um, it's, uh, you know, Moto Guzzi belongs to Piaggio. So uh, the, the ECU that's in my bike is the same in that the, the big Piaggio uh, motor scooters have, you know, the ones that drive 120 or whatever, you know, the big ones. Um, it's it's like it's like one system. It's just like they flash a different uh, control on there for every bike. Like it's I think the same in every modern Moto Guzzi. They just have a different uh, like basically firmware you flash onto that. But that's very like that's a very 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 dumb system, right? That is not like it's technically a computer, but you, like you couldn't hack it. First of all, it doesn't have any connectivity. You probably get like the my motorbike doesn't even have a CAN bus. Right? It just has this ECU and wires coming out of the ECU to all parts of the engine, which is where the electronics fault was. 
actually the electronics fault uh, was the uh, clutch handle which somebody actually on the internet suggested when if that's broken if there's a switch in there if that's broken uh the uh it it um the 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 the, the uh, ECU things the clutch will never get released and so it doesn't turn off so it uses uh like 50 milliamperes every time whenever it's on so it just drained the battery uh, but i could only with my limited electronics uh, could trace it to the ECU like from the you know from the from the battery through the fuse box to the fuse that goes to the ECU but because of on the other side there's like this board with like all these out pins and they're connected to everything you know the 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 of course the ignition system you know the clutch handle the the uh, you know there's a little switch that tells that tells the bike if the the kickstand is is kicked out or not um all this kind of stuff the the um the lambda uh, probes in in the exhaust uh there, there's like you know th thermostats uh all, all this kind of stuff um so you know that's that's the ecu but i generally i was talking um about the entertainment system stuff like that which generally in modern cars is they're, they're full-blown computers right with a i think in the tesla it's it's linux pretty sure uh might be might be a bsd you know really operating systems that have um, modern features of operating systems of course uh, some cars the brakes run linux like they have em embedded linux in there that you can hack that too which is even more scary but generally a modern car uh, has a lot more computers in it than the ecu the ecu is probably the most important thing like especially you know on a very involved car you know you'd need like it's not like my motorbike you know my motorbike has two cylinders and that's it like on a but on a on a big car you know on a v6 or whatever you'd have you have all these kind of stuff and it you know it's all connected as i was saying in that episode um often this is connected to the entertainment system because the entertainment system wants to know how fast you drive and so it can show that and all this kind of stuff uh our anonymous listener goes on uh producer and as far as regulations go on one hand car manufacturers are required by law to satisfy the regulations so in some cases, you can say that they are the victim here because satisfying regulations have a non-negotiable cost. Of course, it could be that some companies are somehow contributing to the establishment of these regulations. And of course, they help draft them by contributing to committees. But this is the world we live in. And sometimes this complex mechanism is what brings food to some tables and fattening the pockets of others. So somebody who works in the car industry, of course. Um, yeah, my issue with this, I don't have an issue with regulation. Sometimes the regulation is just needed. Uh, my issue was uh, with the fact that, you know, we were talking about this um, emergency system that if you have a crash, it calls uh, emergency uh, services that I personally feel the downside of the way that is implemented is higher than what it actually does. Uh, but even if it isn't, I, as the owner of the car, would like an easy ability to turn that off. I want to turn these things off. right? I don't give a fuck if the EU thinks, if I'm at the traffic light, my engine needs to turn off. I want to turn that off. I want to have the ability to turn that system off. Even if it's not good for the environment, not good for me, not good... I don't care. It's my fucking car. right? I spent like 50,000 euros on this fucking car and I can't turn what i think is spyware in there off like that's reg regulation i i um object to and it's just like that it's not a eu thing it's just generally regulation like that um i object to to the state trying to tell me what's best for me i'm a i'm a grown person i'm an intelligent person i can read scientific literature better than the politicians who are deciding this kind of stuff I want the ability to decide for myself. And that's what this podcast is about, by the way. Uh, that's why I have show notes and have all the links so you can decide for yourself what you think. Because I don't, you know, I don't want, I don't want, I want a discourse here. I want to tell you what you have to think. Um, and so, you know, that that's the kind of, uh, it's just the kind of regulation I object to. Uh, but thank you for that email. Again, you know, this is even if I don't agree 
um, it enables me to have a discourse which is which is the important thing. So uh, let's 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 talk about let's move into the last segment of the show and let's talk about uh, you know what keeps the lights on around here. <laughs> So you, if you listen to this podcast for a long time, you, you have heard this before. Uh, I produced this podcast uh, in in my time for you. Um, I, as I said, I like feedback. I like to uh, you to tell me what you would like. Um, but you can also help me out a little bit by kind of, um, you know, kicking me some money that I can survive on. I uh, promise I will not use it to invest in stock, in stonks. Uh, neither GameStop nor any other stock. It's just not something I do. Um, if my wife at some point gets the idea of doing that, uh, then I will leave that in her capable hands and I will want nothing to do with it. She will be my um, my hedge fund, basically. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, so uh, help me out here. Uh, it, it's very much appreciated. Um, the easy way is Patreon. It's just easy for you easy for me it's nice because it's uh, like a monthly thing um, there are different levels uh, starting with one dollar a month whatever that is where you are uh, that is included uh, patreon helpfully um, shows you what kind of taxes uh, i need to hand over to the um, german state and adds that on so that's appreciated if you don't want to do that you can just send me money uh, in a one-off way Uh, via PayPal, uh, producers at Fab Industries, producers at fab.industries is the email address. If you want another way, please let me know. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, it just needs to be uh, workable. Um, oh, Mode mode 7 uh, in, in Twitch Live says uh, <laughs> Dogecoin. <laughs> please no cryptocurrencies i have a bad i have a bad history with those uh, mode 7 has just uh, become a patron so i appreciate that very much so you will not be on this list because i compiled this list when i when i prepped for the show uh, you'll you'll be on there uh, on friday actually <laughs> when the next show comes out so yes so i would like to thank everybody um this is of course uh, this I, i stole this this the value for value model well i stole it um Adam Curry and John C. Dvorak, who came up with this, uh, are completely uh, happy for other people to use this. In fact, they encourage this. And it works like this. Uh, if you if you think you got value from this, then uh, give some value back. And uh, I'll leave you to uh, imagine what that is. Anyway, I would like to thank everybody. Now, first off, I have to say thanks to Raul Kabazali, who uh, I licensed the uh, theme music for the show from, which I love very much. And it's become... Uh, obviously the uh, thing by which you recognize the show and um, it's very good it's a song called Acoustic Roots and then I have to be thankful to ByteMark at ByteMark.co.uk which are a British hosting company um, which provides me with two servers that I use uh, to store the audio files on and more specifically for you to download the audio files which um, has for years just worked like a charm it's very fast so let's all thank ByteMark because without them I could do this You couldn't pay me enough Dogecoin probably for me to keep the servers on. <laughs> okay, and yet, and yet, I'm, I'm, oh God, it's been a long day. I need more beer. I'm turning Germany all of a sudden. Now, let's thank everybody who, um, I mean, everybody's a producer. I say this always, uh, this is part of Value for Value. If you just write me things, if you give me ideas for, for topics, That's being a producer that helps is very much appreciated. Just you know, being in in chat on uh, uh, on 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 Twitch while I do this helps uh, shows me that people enjoy what I'm what I'm doing. Um, but what helps the most is just uh, providing some value. And the list of those people, uh, not including Mode Seven, uh, <laughs> who uh, just. Uh, subscribed live during the show um, is as follows um, so thanks a lot to Michael Mullen Jensen Dave, Jonathan M. Heavy Butterbeans, Georges Steve Hose, Mark Holland Shelby Kruver, Jackie Plage Philip Klostermann, 
1i11g, Jaroslav Lichtblau, Kai Sears, Fadi Mansur, IKN, Dirk Didi, Mac Matt Jellyman, Joe Poser, Michael Small, David Potter, Mika, Martin, Dave Amrish, SJ, Ricky M, Drive Zero, Mr. Amish, Jonathan Edwards, Barry Williams, Larry Glock, Bennett Piata, Av Avis, Neil, Captain Eckert, Christoph Martin, and Felipe Cavallo. I hope I said this correctly. I would also like to thank my Twitch subscribers uh, who are subscribed to my Twitch channel, maybe because of this podcast, but maybe also because of the game streaming I do from time to time. Uh, but they, he, he brain freeze. They help keep the lights on as well. Those are, some of these are uh, also producers of the show. Um, uh, those are Mike the Dane, Jason Word, Galcharen, who just before we started resubscribed. He's been a subscriber to my Twitch channel for a year, which is just mind blowing. Um, yeah, I knew the, sh the channel was going for a year, but still, it's like, oh, it's been a year. Um, so, Galtaran, Redeemer F, Indie Game EX, and Andy Pants. And that's everybody. Thanks to all of you. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I just did my taxes for the last year, and it was a horrible year. <laughs> but hey we survive um you know i'm doing much better than a lot of other people uh, i don't have to like go and work in a job i don't want to work in i can put food on the table it's all good but i appreciate that you're helping out it is seriously appreciated a lot of these people have been there for a year now uh, we're doing the show uh on friday one year episode I'm actually I should look up uh go back to the uh to the first episode and the, the list. Did I have a list in the first oh god no I have to look this do this. I have to scroll up here. Wait. Uh right. Episode one. Probably be faster to do it in the URL. Uh yes. So, actually, the first episode, uh, let's do that now. Uh, we had Niall Donegan, Michael Mullen Jensen, Jonathan M. Heavy, Georges Walter, Dave Kaisiers, Matt Jelliman, Fadi Mansour, Joe Pozo, and Dave. Those people have been there for a year. And a lot of other people uh, have come along and have, have stuck with the show. And I, it, I do appreciate that. Anyway, let, that's enough uh, tear jerking. It's almost like two hours. It's, it's enough. Um, I'm going to wrap up the show. I'm going to see you uh, again on Friday uh, for another episode where I do the special a AMA uh, episode. Until then, um, be safe, as everybody says these days. <laughs> More importantly, be happy and also hodl. Hodl the stonks. Remember, hold all the stonks. Or as Rudy likes to say, stay the course. Stay the course. Don't sell your black lotus. Oh. Uh, before I, before I uh, leave, uh, I have to tell you also that the song we're playing out with is a song called Drop Dead by Van Syke. So don't take that seriously. Don't drop, drop dead. Stay the course.
I like how that song fa- fades out like on a it's like on a uh, on a on a mass uh, hum there. Uh, what the fuck's wrong with my mic boom? It's doing like crazy shit today. <sighs> so that is uh, the show. Uh, yes. Uh, so mode seven, uh, as you see in this uh, on my shirt, is Israel Adesanya, uh, the last style banner. He is my favorite. Uh, UFC fighter. He is a lot of fun. He's a nerd, uh, plays video games, uh, <laughs> and is a fucking deadly dude uh, who is fights very smart. Uh, his his whole thing is uh, not getting hit while hitting the other person a lot. And then when the other person tries to hit him, he's just not there. And then he just like with a oh god, the kind of kicks he throws. He's a he's a very much a kickboxer. Um, he's he's amazing. I love him. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, yeah, so that was it for this show. I will now um, end the stream in a little bit because I've got an hour left and I need to get the show out. Also, I get up early tomorrow to pick up my motorbike, which hopefully is going to be fixed. And then hopefully it's going to be the last time I'll have to pay money <laughs> in a while, which would be nice. And then uh, even more hopefully... Uh, we can circumvent lockdown things and I actually can go to the North Cup with my dad in the summer. That's a plan. Uh, we did Norway last year um, and uh, the uh, the new idea is going to be for this year that we actually do the North Cup, which is a very, 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 very long way uh, and will be interesting. Isn't it cold? Well, the plan is that we'll go in like August or like July. We we're going in the in the warmest time, <laughs> which doesn't mean it's gonna be warm, but it won't be fucking freezing. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm just having a look. Okay, so I'm gonna rate you. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna rate. I think I've never rated him. I'm gonna rate Ben Burns. Uh, ben Burns is actually uh, long before I had a patron. Um, oh, you heard him there for a second. Long before I had a patron, when we were doing uh, Geek News Radio and uh, us having a patron was a joke, um, I um, so I, I went to Patreon and created an account to subscribe to Ben Burns. Ben Burns is a musician. Uh, he does a lot of synthesizer stuff. And he does streams where he creates songs. He creates like a song a week live on stream uh, with input from from his viewers. Uh, it's amazing. I really like it. I like his music. I've used his music in podcasts, in my Twitch stream in the past. So he's a great guy. So I'm going to rate him now. Uh, please stay on board uh, if you if you would be so kind and say hello from Foxtrot Alpha Bravo. Now, I need to figure this out, but I think I can. Uh, I think I can do this. Uh, it's technically very complicated. I have to go to the right website, and then I have to click on a button, and then I have to search for his name, and then I don't find it because it's dumb, and then we can do this. Okay, so I'm going to rate him now. Say hello from me, and hopefully I'll see you on Friday. Maybe I'll be on time. I'll give my best. Uh... I, I think I have to be, otherwise the wife's going to be angry with me. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll do that, and we'll we're going to do an AMA session. That is going to be fun. Okay, say hello to Ben from me. Uh, I'll be in chat there for a bit as well, and then I'll I'll finish the podcast. Um, see you around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it very much. See you on Friday.